You're watching Kruger Nation Horror Movie Reviews. Today I'm talking about a film series that's very special to me. Night of the Demons. Oh yeah. Night of the Demons. 1988. This movie is directed by Kevin Tinney, who the previous year directed Witchboard. And the cast in this film is great. I mean, every single character is likable in their own little way. The two that stand out to me the most, though, are Hal Havens, who played Stooge. And he's just awesome. He's so funny. And just, he's a jerk, but in all the right ways. Um, you know, he does a lot of TV work now, but I would really like to see him pull a Stooge out again. That didn't sound right. It also stars Linnea Quigley, who is one of the most famous Scream Queens of all time, if not the best Scream Queen. She has the most infamous shot in this entire movie, where she takes lipstick and goes around the boob and inserts it into the nipple. Yeah, boob magic. Try that, Chris Angel. This is the story of a girl named Angela who decides to throw a Halloween party at the infamous whole house. This house is the site of several horrific murders and is said to not be haunted, but possessed by demons. And the teenagers going into this house know it's supposedly possessed by demons. And what's the first thing they do when they get there? Throw a seance. So, the demons are awakened, and one by one they possess the teens, starting with Angela, who is the head demon. And from there, they just wreak havoc throughout the entire Halloween night. And it's just tons of fun. This movie, I mean, the fun never stops. For being a low-budget, campy horror movie, there were some awesome camera shots in this flick. And also, the music was done by the director's brother, Michael Dennis Tenney, and that was awesome too. I mean, the music for this was really cool. He did, I think, three songs with a band, and then he did the score for the film, and... It was really great. And lastly, this movie has tons of quotable lines. And that's all I got for Night of the Demons Part 1, so eat a bowl of fuck, I'm here to party. Super High Recommend Night of the Demons 2, 1994 This movie is directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who is most famous for 1983's BMX Bandits. It's also written by Joe Augustine, who did the original screenplay for Night of the Demons in 1988. This is the story of a bunch of teenagers that live at a Catholic school and they're banned from going to the Halloween dance. So instead, they go to Whole House and from there, Angela, the main demon from part one, starts killing them one by one and possessing them all. That's pretty much the, the whole story. Again, this movie has a pretty decent cast. Not as good as the first one, but still pretty good. Uh, it has Marsha Brady herself, Christine Taylor, and uh, Zoe Trilling, who you may remember from my Mega Bitch vs. Giant Douchebag countdown. She's been in a bunch of horror B-movie stuff. This one may be even campier than the first movie. I mean, there's some things in it that happen and you're like, what the shit? But uh, it's a lot of fun, and they do bring back the boob magic from the first film. It's not the same, though. There's a scene where a guy goes to grab a girl's boobs, and they turn into hands and grab him first, and I thought that was pretty cool. And it wasn't CGI. It was all practical effects stuff, so it was pretty cool. Recommend. Night of the Demons 3, 1997. This one was directed by Jim Kaufman, who from what I can tell has only done uh, TV type work. But it is written by Kevin Tenney, who directed the original Night of the Demons. This is the story of a bunch of teenagers in a van who, I, I don't know if they're going to a Halloween party or what, but they end up going to a convenience store and getting in a gunfight. So they decide to hide out at Whole House, which is strangely completely different from the first two films and it's like a really nice house it doesn't even look like an old house or anything at all and it's occupied by angela and one by one they get possessed again and it's pretty much the entire story the homicide cop character from uh witchboard dewhurst is actually in this film with a lot of the same dialogue and mannerisms but he's actually portrayed by a different actor in this and besides that one character every other character in this movie is horrible. There's not one likable character. I mean, I think the cop and Angela are the only two characters you can really get on board with in this film. The teenagers suck. The special effects in this movie were a huge step down from the previous two films. Um, Angela's demon voice was still the same, but the other kids, they had different demon voices and they were really weird and like overproduced. And um, there's not a whole lot more to say. I mean, there's a scene where Angela performs fellatio on a pistol, and that was a pretty cool scene. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot more to say about this movie. Very low recommend. Night of the Demons, 2009. 
This movie is directed by Adam Garash, who has written several films in the past, including Dario Argento's Mother of Tears and Toby Hooper's remake of The Toolbox Murders. He's a huge horror fan. He respects the genre, the original film, the fans. This guy is the perfect person to remake a horror movie because he's not doing it just for the money like a studio would. This film's also produced by Kevin Tenney, the original director of Night of the Demons, so that rocks. In this movie, Angela's throwing a Halloween party at Broussard Mansion, where 80 years before, a bunch of brutal murders took place. Well, after the party starts, they get shut down by the police because they don't have a permit for the party. And seven of them are left inside Broussard Mansion for the rest of the night. They can't leave because the gates are locked. And so they decide to drink and party it up. That's when they find five skeletons in the basement, and one of them bites Angela's finger. She then turns into a demon, and slowly, one by one, they alternate into demons. Three of them left to survive against the rest. This is a fun, fun movie. There's tons of gore, nice looking women, and just fun. It, it had all the original campiness of the 1988 film, but it you know stood on its own as being just a cool movie. This movie had cool characters, but it also had an awesome cast. It had Edward Furlong, Shannon Elizabeth, Monica Kena, and two of my personal favorites, Bobby Sue Luther and Dior Baird. There were also some great callbacks to the original film, including the best cameo I've ever seen in a movie involving Linnea Quigley. Plus, they brought back the boob magic that Part 3 was missing. Not that Part 3 would have been any better with boob magic, but no, it probably would have been a little better with boob magic. But still, in this one, they brought back the lipstick trick, but I'm not going to spoil it for you because they added a little something extra for the old school diehards. The last thing I'd like to say is that they picked a lot of good music for this movie. Now I didn't expect that because you see movies like Friday the 13th 2008 and it's a bunch of pop shit that doesn't even belong in a horror movie and it takes you out. But this one was really cool. It had like Typo Negative and a bunch of other bands. I mean, they did a really good job picking music for this one. I recommend. That wraps up my Night of the Demons retrospective. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Click the like button, subscribe, tell all your friends about it. That's it for this episode. Till next time, Kruger Nation. Peace. This music. <laughs> he directed Witchboard. It's. Oh, fuck. About the following year after Wit. Fuck, dog. Angela's throwing a party at Hull House, which is. used to be. Fuck, dog. Used to be a funeral parlor. <laughs> the plot of this movie. Uh, This is the story of a girl named... What the fuck just happened? And once the teens get there, what do we... <laughs> the house is the site of a... Fuck dog! This is the story... Fuck! Did I say that twice? This one was directed by Brian Trenchard Smith, who is most known for Night... And it's written by Brian Tenney... Brian Tenney? So I think that makes him more competent direct to... ...original movies, and that thing... That... <laughs> He loves and respects the originals, which I think sent. Thinks. The movie's written by Adam Garash, who has Garash up. Written many things, including Night Fuckers. <laughs> this movie's directed by Adam Garash, who is. The fuck am I? A remake in the hands of someone like that is awesome for the fans because he, you know, respects the remake. Or oh, fuck, dog. In this movie, Angela's throwing a party at Bro.